Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm going to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. Now, the Bible makes it very, very clear in Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21 that there would be a lot of signs that we could look for leading up to the end of the age in, in the last days. The Bible calls these signs birth pangs and the beginning of sorrows, which will lead us into the final seven-year period of time known as the time of Jacob's trouble, <coughs> excuse me, or Daniel's 70th week, and we also refer to it as the tribulation period. And just like when a woman is, is in labor and the birth pains become more and more frequent and closer and closer together, and more and more intense, that's what the Bible says will happen in the last days. And we're seeing those things happen right now with earthquakes. For example, the state of Oklahoma, in the last year, their earthquakes have increased 2,000% in the last year. And I did a video a couple days ago talking about how the, there's a lot of earthquakes going on right now and the wildfires in, in Oklahoma. Just as they're trying to decide whether to allow the satanic monument to be put on the grounds of the Oklahoma State Capitol. <clears throat> well, there's so many things going on in the news now that it's, it really truly is hard to keep up with it. And it really is kind of hard to figure out what I want to include in the videos each day because there's so much to choose from. But today I'm going to go over three quick um, <clears throat> news stories that, that kind of go along with some of the other videos I've done this week. So it's been, kind of been a theme this week has been Christian rights and Christian persecution and how far our nation has fallen from God and how intolerant the world as well as the United States is, is becoming to the Christian message. The first story here is a local news story out of Florida and it's very, very similar to a news story from a few weeks ago about a second grader in California. This time, though, it's a fifth grade boy. And the headline says, Florida teacher draws protest after telling boy he can't read the Bible. The good thing about this headline is it does say that people protested this. But we're starting to see <clears throat> that Christian rights are being taken completely away from us. And here's another example of a Christian being persecuted in a public school. It goes on to say, <clears throat> The father of a Florida 5th grader protested after his son was told he couldn't read his Bible at school, according to a local television station. CBS Miami reported that the student was reading a Bible during a free reading period at Park Lakes Elementary School. The teacher reportedly told him to put the book down and get his father on the phone. According to the Liberty Institute, a conservative Christian advocacy and legal defense organization, the teacher left a voice message saying that the student wasn't allowed to, re re to read religious books in the classroom. <clears throat> the father sent a letter to the principal saying he thought the school was violating his son's right to free speech and religious expression. The Liberty Institute also got involved and sent a letter to the school. Previous court decisions have found that while public schools aren't allowed to lead students in prayers or teach religion, students can pray on their own or organize groups themselves. The school originally said students can read the Bible before or after school or during lunch, but it later said students could also read the Bible during free reading time. So thankfully in this particular story, because of the protests, it looks like the boy's winning his case at this point. But we're living in the last days, and as the spirit of Antichrist continues to grow, and the one world government, one world religion begins to, to really be put into place, and when the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is removed in the last days, there will be no more victories for Christians in these situations. Now here's another... Uh, school story. This one out of California again. Um, and I just it's amazing to me what goes on in our schools these days. This one is called 
Headline says California School District. It's, it's actually Rialto Unified is the name of the school. Defends writing assignment on confirming or denying the Holocaust. I'm going to read a little bit from this article. <clears throat> the Rialto Unified School District is defending an 8th grade assignment that asks students to debate in writing whether the Holocaust was merely a political scheme created to influence public emotion and gain. <clears throat> wow. Let me read that again. Students were asked to debate in writing whether the Holocaust was merely a political scheme created to influence public emotion and gain. The district says the assignment is merely to teach students to evaluate the quality of evidence made by advocates or opponents of an issue. That's just great, but why would they pick that issue? It's so emotional, dealing with such an evil time in our country's history, where six million plus Jews were murdered by Hitler. And then, indoctrinate our students into thinking, along with a lot of what the Muslims say, that the Holocaust never happened. Go <clears throat> wow, okay. goes on to say, when tragic events occur in history, there is often debate about their actual existence. For example, some people claim the Holocaust is not an actual historical event, but instead is a propaganda, a propaganda tool that is used for political and monetary gain. On Friday, the Los Angeles-based Anti-Defamation League was critical of the April Argumentative Writing Research Project and expressed its concerns to Rialto Unified's interim school superintendent. Now, are you ready for this? You cannot absolutely make this stuff up. This is the guy's name. This is the superintendent's name in this school, in this school district. Muhammad Islam. <laughs> that is his name, Muhammad Islam. Isn't that interesting? And then they do a report on whether the Holocaust actually happened or not. It is ridiculous what's going on in our public schools. Yet you, you can't mention the name of Jesus. But we can, uh, well, and you fear for your lives when you go into the schools these days. It's, wow. All right, let's just... Go on. I'm going to put links to these articles into the uh, description box so you can read uh, more details for yourself. But sad state of affairs in this country right now. One more. This isn't about a school, but this is about um, a TV show on the HGTV network, which is a uh, does do-it-yourself TV shows. The Benham Brothers. It says Benham Brothers lose. HGTV show after anti-gay remarks. And the show was canceled. I'm going to read from the Chicago Tribune here. David and, J and Jason Benham issued a statement early Thursday in response to HGTV's decision to cancel their upcoming show, Flip It Forward, after reports came to light of the brothers' past anti-LGBT ministry and political efforts. We are saddened to hear HGTV's decision, the brothers wrote. With all the grotesque things that can be seen and heard on television today, you would think there would be room for two twin brothers who are faithful to our families, committed to biblical principles, and dedicated professionals. If our faith costs us a television show, then so be it, they added. As Christians, we are called to love our fellow man. Anyone who suggests that we hate homosexuals or people of other faiths is either misinformed or lying, he wrote. Um, now that's their, their side of the, of the story. I'm going to read the uh, TMZ.com side of the story. <clears throat> it says, Christian hosts defend beliefs we don't hate gays. Twin conservative brothers, Christian brothers, whose show just got yanked, say they're unfairly crucified for their religious beliefs about gays, but if their faith, faith costs them a TV show, then so be it. 
It says, the news came after a website reported the brothers were anti-gay activists who had led prayer rallies against homosexuality. Their father is also a prominent anti-abortion crusader. Wow, that's a terrible thing to be. Uh, the brothers tell TMZ, as Christians, they've never discriminated against people who don't share their views. And true Christians do not. But we're still losing all of our rights. The so-called gospel of tolerance, if you want to call it that, it seems to be tolerant of everything except one thing. Christians. <clears throat> it says, anyone who suggests that we hate homosexuals or people of other faiths is either misinformed or lying. Um... It's just, it's, you know, we've seen three or four people step down or lose their job in just the last few weeks for speaking out and, and saying what the Bible says about an issue. We are absolutely getting to the point where we have zero freedom of speech and freedom of, of religion. We hear all the time about the freedom from religion, which is not in the Constitution, and we're losing our rights to practice our beliefs. you got to wonder how much longer the, the Christians will be able to practice their faith at all without being imprisoned. The Bible says those days are coming, and we're seeing evidence of it right now. And when I watch what's going on in the schools, it just absolutely amazes me because, you know, there is a lot of historical evidence for, for Jesus Christ. There's historical evidence uh, through archaeology and, and, and things like that. But the real proof of that Jesus Christ existed and he was re is real is, is a couple of things. One, <clears throat> 2,000 years of changed lives for good all over the planet. The true church of Jesus Christ is a force for good and a light in a world of darkness. There's also fulfilled prophecies throughout the, throughout the Bible that have already been fulfilled exactly like the Bible said would happen. And quite a few more soon to come that will also be fulfilled exactly like the Bible says. And in fact, that's why I'm doing these videos, because we're seeing a lot of these prophecies taking place and coming together as we speak. And then the last sign is the hatred of Christians by the world and how that's intensifying and growing all over the world, exactly like Jesus said would happen in the last days. He said, if the world hates you, remember it hated me first. The Bible says anybody that would live a godly life will suffer persecution. And I'm not seeing a lot of hatred for other faiths, other than the Jews, around the world. People seem to be pretty tolerant of, of the Hindus and the Buddhists and the New Age people and, the, and even the Muslims. The, and of course, a lot of the people, I think, respect, give the, the uh, Muslims somewhat respect simply because they're afraid of them. Afraid they'll get persecuted or killed by radical Islam if they speak out against it. But there's no tolerance whatsoever anymore of the Christian message. Which again, is just another sign that we're coming down to the end of time. We're living in the last days. All the signs that Jesus said would be here, signaling his return, are here and accelerating every day. Keep looking up. God bless you.